Welcome back to Career Build Series. This is episode number 89. And so in this episode, we're going to go ahead and take out my new high-speed catamaran. It's designed so that it can self-load some containers. So this will be a container mover, but also it can be used for other uh, sort of cargo transport needs. We can put on vehicles with the two cranes. Uh, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to take a container that can hold jet fuel. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to run up to the military island and sell that jet fuel. So let's go ahead and get going here. All right, so did some work on this last couple days, getting it ready. So here's the high-speed container ship. And as you can see, it still has microcontrollers and some stuff on there, but it is working. So let's go ahead, selection grid. We'll grab this jet fuel container here, make sure it's all set. All right, so this is, let's do, we'll do a little edit on this too. Paste that, and then I thought I had added this before, but I will add it again. So let's do, I'm going to go ahead just to expedite the filling and emptying process. We have, we'll put three fluids on there, and that way it's just a little bit quicker to empty it and fill it. All right, so here we go. Let's look at the spawner. So I have a spawner in here. It's uh, jet fuel. I'm um, spawning about 50%, which is about 12,000. Let's make sure that this is set to uh, flicky camera. Yay. So here is the uh, toggle button that will disconnect those. So let's make sure that is on. So those will connect. Now let's spawn it in. And so let's go with what we have here. That's 12,000 liters. If I put more on, we'll probably get, uh, see, as you can see, it's flooding a little bit as it is. Fake flooding. Of course, the walls would stop at IRL, but in game it does it. So about 12,000 liters on there. That is uh, holding us steady. I think I have a fluid meter here. So, yep. Uh, 12,245 liters of jet fuel. And so let's go ahead and get going here. So we'll do master power systems. This has the pretty much same panel as the vice boat and my new speed boat. And that's just for uh, speed sake to get this up and running. Now I'll customize it a little bit later. And so this moves at pretty high speed. We're currently, you know, uh, we have good visibility out there. We're gonna have to navigate via sight. So uh, that's not a huge deal. So we're going to go up to the military island. This goes, as you can see, we're doing about between 45 and 50 knots. And so just to kind of quickly show you the distance we're talking about here. That is currently about 27 kilometers, so about half of that. So you're talking, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood about around 15 uh, nautical miles. So uh, we're going about uh, three times that, so it'll be about a third of an hour. So about 20 minutes to get there, not too bad. You know, that's one of the main reasons to build this is it allows me to get places relatively quickly. And so as you can see, it has some cranes on there. Those cranes are sticking out. They'll probably be extendable, retractable cranes at some point. I need to put some effort in there. Mainly this was for testing to make sure that it was actually up and working. This allows me to load things like vehicles on there. It also will allow me to load containers. I can load three of the standard containers. You know, the standard containers now are down sub 2,000 weight, and so they're not all that heavy. This one with, you know, 12,000 liters of jet fuel is probably pretty heavy, and so we can take one of these. So this is still a nice, effective way to transport these things. If I took the Seagull, for example, I could take two of those pallets. That's going to be about 4,000 liters, so this is uh, has greater than three times the capacity. So, of course, that's going to be much faster. But this is, uh, you know, this can hold a greater capacity. So we'd have to do three trips in the Seagull with just one trip in this. So I still have some issues there where, like, I have to move things around to make sure that I don't, uh, you know, that I can actually walk around my deck. I still have, like, those are the air, <laughs> that's the air intakes for the engine. So a bunch of this stuff needs to be fixed. And you put stacks in. The stacks will probably be integrated into the, con into the cranes. Cranes probably need to come back one block, but, uh, you know, just pretty basic, kind of getting the stuff up and running so I know where it is. But uh, 
done a bunch of lift tests. You can watch. There's a short, like, 30-second video I made where it's me loading containers off of the very high docks. And uh, I can do it really well with this. So this will be a cool craft to add to the fleet. And so we're currently headed uh, 024. Let's, uh, that's actually probably all right. I can start to see the coast of the Sawyer Islands. And so I'll go ahead and we'll time lapse you guys out and I'll see if we can get there. So we're uh, starting to arrive at the military island now. So that was a pretty quick trip. You know, it's uh, started reporting about 24 minutes ago. So, you know, probably about 20 minutes like I estimated. It'll probably a little bit longer seeing we had to go around parts of the island. But a uh, pretty quick way to get around. You know, the distances are damn short in Stormark. So it's, uh, it doesn't take very long. And this is an, a screaming fast ship. But this is fast for a ship of this size. You know, we're talking uh, 45 knots. And so it's another good tool to have. We can use this for a bunch of stuff if we uh, want to get things uh, moving a little bit more quickly. You know, I kind of like the slower gameplay sometimes, but sometimes, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to have to go AFK a bunch. You know, if I actually want to sit here and and be active, I can uh, use something like this. So this is another good option, another good tool. That's cool island. Up oh, there's a crate up there. Hey. And uh, so let's go ahead and we're gonna get ready here. We want to dock. And uh, 
try to pump out the jet fuel. You know, another way we have, so I like having a bunch of different options. And so we can take the Seagull with a couple pallets. We can take the new cargo plane with a pallet. The benefit with the new cargo plane is that holds something in the neighborhood of uh, 18,000 pounds, about 9,000 liters of jet fuel. And so we can take, you know, for example, we'll take 9,000 liters of jet fuel inside of that cargo plane, the new stall plane, and we can take another additional two in a pallet in the back. You know, so you're talking, you have 11,000 liters, so almost what we have in this container. And in order to get back out of there, we're going to have to, you know, drop you know, maybe we can go down to like 2,000 liters remaining for a return trip. That would probably make sense. Or we could even throw it in the bench and take something else out of there. So that gives us some options, uh, again, for an even faster way to move some fuel over here. So these are all options. Uh, if we look at the wind here, we have the winds coming from the uh, northeast there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go on the windward side of this dock. This is geared up to be fast, so I don't do gear shifting like, you know, uh, some people do. You know, it's not really all that realistic for boats, so I tend not to do it. So I kind of have to be careful here docking because of that. And so I'm just going to kind of try to use my two screws. I'm let the actual water push, the uh, wind push me. So as you can see, the wind is pushing me towards the dock pretty slowly, but it's pushing me. And I'm just going to kind of walk with my thrust. So I'm going to go up on starboard. And then I'm going to go up on port. So not only does that get me closer, but it turns me a little bit. I'm just going to come back on starboard just a little bit. We'll come in reverse on starboard. All right, and so I'm just going to kind of walk it over. Go up on starboard a little bit here. I have to watch my rudder. My rudder, I have to put in a limiter. They're only going to do about 45 degrees, which is about 50%. And then they, uh, they're they not act, they're not really all that uh, helpful anymore. You know, they don't uh, operate really well like that. So I have to kind of keep an eye on it as I'm doing it. So we're going to come back on starboard. I need a rudder indicator, and I need a sticky rudder is usually what I do. I have yet to do that. So that's sinking because I have not yet to put in part of the stability system. It needs to be the fin system that is stabilizing. It needs to be inverted when we go in reverse, and it presently is not. So, so you'll see it will, it will try to swap us. It will try to bring us underwater. So just working slowly here. You know, again, these... This is one good way to start to remind me of what the build needs is as we learn this. See, like it's doing the same in the front now. It's trying to operate backwards. So not the end of the world, but just something to keep in mind. All right, so let's go ahead and forward on starboard. Just walking it in. See, as you can see, it's very touchy because this is, again, geared for high RPS, which kind of jumps because there's no real momentum in a game like there should be. Do not break, you scum. All right, let's get out of here and try to rope up a little bit here. So let's go get moving. He's stuck, and it's annoying me because I'm trying not to miss the ladder, and he is stuck. Yeah, a little bit frustrated there. there we go. At least get one on there. All right, so that's set. Let's go ahead and start pumping the pumps on from last time I did this. And I really should probably, let's do this. Let's, I have to kind of squat to get this ladder. Okay, dude, come on, grab the ladder. Okay. I guess he wasn't gonna break his ankle, but um, That's a little bit annoying. Come on, man. There we go. All right, let's uh, go ahead and we'll hook this hose up. Hose will also help keep us connected to the dock. Wind, wind's up a little bit. It's not too bad, but it's uh, pretty good. 
So the buy price is six bucks. So this should be pretty good, as you can see. So we're talking um, seventy-two thousand right here. So this is a pretty good uh, bit of money for not a ton of, not an insane amount of effort. You know, so this will help in the endeavor to get things going. Like I want to buy that custom island so that I can build some. And I'd like to get moving on the home ship again at some point. Not feeling too much in the home ship. The issues with like something like a home ship is, you know, you can spend days and days and days just working on panels and, and working on the bridge and stuff like that. And sometimes, you know, I feel like doing that stuff. Sometimes I don't. So, you know, I was like, you know, Triton never get finished because it's just like it was mostly like little detailing work. And while I do... Enjoy detailing sometimes. I don't always want to be detailing. So now that we're connected to a dock, I think damages are probably already off. Uh, vehicle damage is off. I shut it off again. The reason for that is you'd be using fenders in real life. You wouldn't have, if you got a little dent in the side of the boat, it wouldn't detonate. So I kind of use that as to make it a little bit more realistic and more reasonable. So let's go see where we're at here. So we're currently, we're making good money right now. Let's go ahead and down there and check what the... How we're going here. So I have a fluid meter in here. So we're about uh, coming up on half. So it's empty pretty fast here. I'll go ahead and uh, I'll time lapse you out and I'll see when we get there. All right, so we're empty. It uh, didn't take very long, you know, from the start of the video to having this here and empty. It took about 32 minutes. So we'd say 50 minutes round trip. That's not bad. Um, not going to bore you guys with the trip back. I will uh, see you guys when we get there, so I'll run it back, and I'll get back with you guys. All right, and to uh, finish up the episode, what we're going to do here is we're back in the test world, and I want to work on the intermodal mineral containers. And so the plan here is an intermodal container is a container that can go on ships. It can go on land vehicles like trucks, and this will allow me, and trains, and this will allow me to transfer this more efficiently. So, for example, what I want to be able to do is have one of these in the back of the scraper. The scraper fills this. Then it will most likely use hook lift to push this off and put it on the ground. Then with the truck that I just made, where or the trailer I made that's self-loading, it can load two of these containers on top. Then it will go over to a train. It will drop them next to the train. The train will then pick them up and load itself. And hopefully this will allow me to fix some of the issues, the really glaring issues with Industrial Frontier, where we have issues moving goods. You know, so I want to get moving on that. So currently we have a bunch of small... Uh, you know, coal hoppers here. Let's check this. I tried lifting this before, and we can't lift a ton of weight. This is 729. That's a little excessive. So the main thing we're going to have problems with here is mass. And so I'm trying to decide how I want to set this up to get this to be reasonable. I'm trying to think if I want to redo a truck or what I want to do. I'm trying to decide how to do this. I could do small containers. Could do that. Could do like short stacks. I, I'm not 100% sure how I want to do this. I have to get the mass down. And I did a bunch of testing. So, for example, I... Let's just save this really quick. So... Intermodal coal tube. Okay. And so let's bring up some of the stuff I worked on. So, for example, this was one of the intermodal coal containers, hoppers. It's not necessarily for coal. It's for any of the minerals. But as you can see, it holds 1260. And this is way, way, way too heavy to be able to load onto that truck. It just, it's just way too heavy. And so I've tried, and, you know, a container weighs like 2,000 around there, a little less than 2,000. And this weighs excessively more than that. And so that's not really going to work. So... One of the things is to make an artificially small capacity on these. The other is I could actually, I think I might do this. I might make some smaller intermodal containers that a train can handle. It's, it's tough because I want to be able to use some of the stuff I already have, but I have to make a whole suite of new loadable stuff anyways. So I think let's actually build some new stuff. 
it kind of it kind of makes that trailer obsolete. But I'm trying to think of the best way to do this here. That's actually kind of neat. So let's I'm going to look up. Uh, so they have these. They call them skips, the dumpsters. You know, in the UK, I know they call them skips. And uh, so they have these cool trucks that uh, I'll bring up an image here in a second of it. And so this this is uh, how they load these. So maybe I'll do it like this because I can't make these containers the full size of a regular container because they're just way, way too heavy to load onto a truck. And the point of this is I need to load this onto my mining vehicle. I need to load this onto a truck. And I need to load this onto a train. I also, likely, if I ever get into gold, which gold is a huge problem because of the way the devs did it, I'm going to need to have a crane that can lift that uh, skip up and put it above the gold washing stations. So having these small containers might be advantageous. So let's go ahead and we'll look at some pictures of the skip trucks. So you see how it's this it's a dumpster essentially. It's angled which is perfect for coal and then it has these two arms and what they do is they chain it. Now it's a huge benefit that that latest update they did with ropes because we can now use ropes like you would chains. It's going to auto gravity. We don't have to have winches. I don't have to have a bunch of pivots. The ropes auto pivot. It's beautiful. And so I'm thinking maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll take one of the chassis of one of my trucks and maybe even build a new truck and put on this type of system. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll load up these small coal skips. And this will hopefully allow me to be able to handle this because currently I did some tests. I took that full size container full of coal which was 1260 and there's no prayer that the uh, truck that I just built was ever going to be able to lift that but the uh, you know I did find out that about 260 something coal I can lift so I think what we'll do is make something like this that can hold about that amount so let's get it go ahead and we'll start fresh I'm gonna make this custom size you know, at first I was fighting this urge because I want to be able to load these onto truck and train and ship, and that makes them truly intermodal. The issue is they're just going to be too heavy, and it's not going to work. So what I'm going to do actually to start with is I'm going to grab large mineral hopper. I'm going to sit one up here, and I need to get the weight. So they weigh 500 by themselves. So these are pretty heavy by themselves. This holds 225, so that's actually pretty close to where I want to be. So maybe I'll make the it this size. I think that's what I'll do. So let's make it this size. I'm trying to decide if I want to go forward back or what. Let's try let's stick on a couple smalls here for a second and see what the total would be. You know, I'm like I said, I'm thinking about 260 max. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, these should all be attached. So, okay, they're not attached. They won't attach the center one, so this isn't going to work anyways. But that is 81 and 225. So we're around three, so that's probably a little excessively heavy. Let's go like this. This will give us more flexibility. And I also I don't want them so wide because I want them to be able to be put on a truck. So let's see. What's the width on that? So that is nine. That'll be eleven. So that'll be about right for a truck anyway. So let's kind of let's get a measure on this because I have to put a funnel underneath as well anyway. So let's uh, oh come on, let's just start fresh here like this. Kind of want these I think going sideways. All right, and so let's go ahead and do this. Let's do nine of these, and let's see where we're at. I think this is going to be a better way to do it. I just think they're way too heavy. All right, so let's go test this out. Let's see what it is. I could add them up and figure it out, but I'm just going to take me two seconds to go jump and check it. So that's 243, so that's pretty good right there. So let's actually go with this. All right, and I want to go, I'm thinking we'll go a duct, and I'm going to put one funnel on here. All right, funnel. Let's go check the capacity now. Again, I could add them up, but it's just, just as easy to do this. All right, 270. So that's about where I want to be. All right, so next thing I want to do is I need to 
Let's go, what are these? One, two, threes. So let's see. Let's grab a band of block like that. All right, and then we want wedges, two by wedges here. And so these would be funnel shaped so that gravity would help the coal, you know, fall down to the bottom. All right, nice. Yeah, I'm trying to see under here a little bit. All right. A little bit stout, but it's not bad. And let's put a block on the inside here. All right, and then I think we'll just fill this in on the side with block like so. All right, so that is kind of our our little uh, skip there. And so what we'll do is we'll put a couple rope anchors in there. Like so. All right. And so that will bring it up. Might not want it so tall. I'm kind of thinking it's a little bit on the tall side here. So let's try to try to see what I can do here. Let's get rid of that. And then I think it's overly tall. And so let's take off this and we'll put the funnel directly under there. Oh, come on. Don't delete things I don't want you to, guy. There we go. Cut that. Now we'll go up and just attach like so. All right. Merge that back up. All right. So this will kind of be the bottom. We'll need a hole for the funnel to actually dump out of. As you can see, it kind of puts it in there itself. So that there, I think, is looking a little bit better. So that is going to be our skip here for the uh, for this. And I'm trying to think how I want to dress this up or if I care. So kind of keep a square sides here, and maybe I'll paint it hat yellow and put some detailing on there because it's a little bit bland. All right. All right, and so the plan with this is going to be this will be able to be put into things like the scraper. This will be able to be dumped in the mine underneath, for example, the coal miner. And then what will happen is this will be lifted up and it will be put into onto some trucks. And then it can be loaded onto trains. And then one of the issues we have with Industrial Frontier is this. Let's go ahead and I'll save this really quick. So... Uh, let's see. All right. And so let, let's go look down at one of the places for Industrial Frontier. Again, this was a huge issue that I think the devs weren't really thinking when they made this. And this is just like a, a, a really huge issue. I, you know, I understand a lot of the other things might just not be to people's preferences, but this was really a lot of people we're kind of flabbergasted with this, is this right here, look how far away it is from the tracks. I think I measured that. That's something like nine blocks, 10, 11 blocks to here. And so you need to go 11 blocks from the track to here to be able to dump your metal. That's silly. That's super, super silly. And then if you want to dump with a truck, you have to drive across the sand, which is, it's kind of RP, but it's, you know, that's part of the game is, is being involved in it. And so there should be a road right next to this. And so that's silly. And then you have these 
funnels that just dump right on the ground. They should be right over here. They should be on one of these overhead pipes. They should be hanging under the overhead pipe, and they should have a button. All these funnels should have a button. I don't know why the devs didn't do that. I'm still going to at some point do a you know, constructive criticism video on this. So one of the things reasons I'm doing these skips is this. I should be able to build a train car that when it gets to here, it will have a couple crane arms, kind of like the truck. And it will be able to reach over, and it will be able to hang that, that, um, that skip over this and dump. And then it will suck it back in and put it back on the train. And so that's kind of what I'm hoping to do here. So let's go ahead and we'll go back and we'll keep working on this. And so the plan is to make these intermodal mineral hoppers. I keep calling them coal hoppers, but they're going to be mineral hoppers. So I want to build a truck that can handle these. I want to build train cars that can handle these. And I did build that trailer with the containers, but again, it's just going to be too massive. It weighs too much. I can't lift it. So for example, this right here is a good mass. We should be able to lift this with a truck. So let's see, 243, that's not bad. We should be able to lift this up. And then the other massive oversight that the devs did, it's obvious they didn't test this. I wish they would. I like to keep a positive attitude about it. I think they're trying. It's not their area of expertise, but there are a lot of these areas where they need to go back and fix. This is insanity. This is as large as a three-story building. I've measured it. So like a three-story building. This should be low enough where a front end loader can dump into it. This is based off of a screen. And it shakes and it drops off the heavier uh, rocks or the larger rocks down here. It goes through a screen. Then it goes through another filter. It goes over here. This is insanely tall. And so in order to cope with this this not very good decision the devs made, you need to bring a crane up here, and then you'll need a truck to come up here, dump the skip, and then we'll have to hook it to the crane and put the crane over here where we should just be able to dump right into it. This here should be on the ground, right there. And we should back up a truck and dump it. That would be beautiful. And guess where this should be? See this thing here? This should not be over here. This should be right here in between the tracks and the road. This is a great location. You have a road, you have train tracks. So you can go from the Iron Mountain and you can put it on a train and then you can send the train down or you, or you know, Iron Mountain's not where gold is. Gold's up over here. So let's say you fill the gold up over here and you put it on a train that comes down here. Then what you would do is you put one of the dumpers under the track, the train dumps, it goes through the facility. You have one of those pipes that goes over the train tracks. You press a button. It dumps in the train. That's how it would be done in real life. That's how it should have been done in game. I wish the devs had done a little bit more research on this. And then if you want to come by truck, you put the gold on a truck. You come down here. You pull in. You dump it again on the ground. You make it so that bottom dump trucks can do it and that rear dump. So what you do is you put that dump area on the ground. The truck goes over it, it dumps, it then goes under another one of those overhead pipes, presses the button, bingo, they all come in, and then you move on your way. So they didn't do that, so we have to cope with it. So do I think they're going to fix it? I hope so, but I'm going to assume no. I'm assume they're going to leave it the way they did it, which is a problem, but you know what, I'm not holding my breath. And so I'm going to have to come up with some ways to fix this. And so one of it is I have to come in with a truck, and then I need to bring a crane here. So probably at some point build a mobile crane if I ever want to do gold because they pretty much made gold not worth doing because of this. And so I'd have to bring a crane up here and then bring the truck up, pull the skip off, dump, dump. And because there's no button here, I have to station a truck under there before I even start the process. So... As you can tell, I'm a little annoyed with Industrial Frontier. Very excited about it. It's my type of gameplay, and the logistics are just, you know, the logistics are not smart. They're just very kind of silly, and so uh, it, it irritates me a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead, and that looks super-duper wide. Let's uh, measure what... Okay, so let's go ahead and let's save this one quick time here. Okay, let's grab just the road train for now. All right, and I want to get a width measurement on this. So that was, I believe, 11. And that is 11. So it's the same width as a truck, so it works. And so what we want to do is, I might build a new truck. I'm not sure. That's going to be a lot of effort. Let's grab the... So I think the best way to do this is going to be another trailer. 
That makes so I don't have to have a purpose-built truck, and then I'm only moving a small amount of coal. The other goal is this. So let's open up the scraper. All right, so the scraper, the scraper is good, but it has some issues. So the scraper can work fine, but it needs a an auger to be able to put it from this scraper into a truck at, say, the coal mine. So it goes in, it mines some coal. The issue is this. It opens up its door, and then what it has to do is it dumps right here. So you have to have it under an auger under it to aug it into whatever you're going to. So that's an, another piece of equipment we need. If I make this intermodal, what we would do is this area here would hold the skip. And so let's go ahead and delete you all out. And so, for example, I'm just going to do it really quick here to kind of show you how this would be. So what this would look like is, let's just take a hacksaw out of this really quick, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Oh, come on, dude. So we'll just cut this really quick. And so, for example, instead of having that in the back, you would have a hook lift. And the hook lift would be able to grab this out. We could do a sliding lift. Uh, hook lift would also work. And so because of the huge size of the ducts, we need to do ducts. And so we go duct, duct, goose. All right, and let's see. I need it. Let's bring in one of the skips. I'm just trying to see where the, what this would look like. I'm not, am I grabbing the right one? Okay. And here's the mineral skip. And so the mineral skip is probably going to be too friggin' wide. It is. Okay, so what I do is redo the back here. And so this mineral skip would be dragged onto the back of this, and it would sit here. And then these would spit with funnels into the back of the skip. And then when it's ready to, when it's full, it would drop this off the back. It would then pick up an empty one. The empty one would go on here. And then it would keep dumping. And what would happen is, in the meantime, the truck would grab this and load itself with the skip here. So I think we're going to work on the skip a little bit here. All right, so let's go ahead and I want to get a trailer going here for this. All right, so here is the trailer template. All right, so here's a trailer template. So this is all hooked up with TTIS. This is good to go. And so what we want to do is we want to get this skip loaded on here, and the width is correct. And you can see because a lot of the things are the same size. So this skip here would be loaded on. So we could fit theoretically, say, one. Two. Three. Four, five. So we can fit five skips on here. And these would be craned on top. So probably put a crane on this. And it would drag and put the skips on. So I need some sort of attachment system to be able to attach to the trailer. But we can fit five on these. And so I'm trying to think what's the best crane system. Could do side load. We cut down our capacity doing side load. I'm trying to think of the best way of how I can hook these up. I think I have an, I, a notion what I want to do. All right, so let's load up the skips. And so I need to figure out the best way to load these. Or attach these, rather. All right, so let's look underneath. And so one thing we do is grippers. That's a thought. And that's kind of my leading thought, I'm thinking. So let's try... They all have to be the same if I do if I load them. So I'm trying to think. Let's bring in that trailer template again. Because I don't want to have to redo. I could make this a flatbed. If I make this flatbed, that will just work. But let's look at this uh, for rails. We can do trailer, we can do the rails of the trailer. So that is five across. Okay, so let's load in the skip again. Alright, so make these five across. And we'll do pinky blocks for a measure. There's three, there's five. Okay, so we'll do delete, delete. And we'll delete there. What are you? Okay, these need to be two, so that's going to fit. Perfect, that will actually fit beautifully. 
All right, so what we're going to do is this. So let's grab some grippers. Try to think about one, grippers or tracks. Yeah, this is always the challenge. Grippers or tracks. The, the issue is this. Another issue I have with how the devs did this. Look at these. These grippers, for some reason, are, are too tall. I mean two blocks tall, as you can see. So they're two blocks tall. This makes it really a pain. These should be one block tall so that they're the same height as the other part, and you can use them interchangeably. This makes it so that planes or boats or whatever we have with grippers have to be doubly thick in order to hold, you know, to be able to hide the grippers. And I wish they hadn't done it this way. If I put these tracks on here, I need to be able to put the grippers on the trailer. So I think it's the best way to do it. I might put the grippers on the trailer. I might make a new trailer system. We'll see. So if, the other thought is to put the tracks on. So the tracks would be these. And the reason why uh, it's kind of annoying is it's actually not too... Let's do grippers, and this is the reason why. I can put a button on this that will lock the grippers and will detach it. So let's go like this. All right, so there are the gripper tracks, and so that will now slide on. So we can put this on a bunch of different things, and that's how this will adhere and lock to the trailers and whatnots. All right, so that's good. That is going to work. And so we need to work up a little panel anyway for this, so the funnel will work. I don't think I can go in there. Nope. Okay, so that's fine, and the funnel will dump right straight down. All right, so this, I think, is going to work out pretty well here. So let's go ahead and... Let's see what I want to do next. So uh, let's get a panel going here. Try to think where I want it. And I'm trying to think what width wise. Okay, so I think I'm going to do this all with ropes. And I need to be able to lock the grippers. So I need to be able to um, actuate the brakes. So I think we'll just do toggles. I don't like the way the toggles look, but it requires zero microcontrollers for me. The issue is it requires electricity. If I use a panel, it doesn't. So let's use a panel. This is not going to require any electricity, and that's why I'm kind of thinking that. Is if you use a flip switch on a panel, it doesn't require any electricity, and that allows me to not have to plumb this for electricity, which is another benefit of this. So, just trying to think of the best way to get this done. All right, so here, let's go, and we'll just pick a node. So, this will be flip switch one. That will be, uh, uh, what do we do? Brakes. All right brakes and then this one here will be release uh, let's do this as attach okay attach brakes and attach this will be two and these will be nuns none okay and this one needs to be a flip switch. So flip switch, again, requires no electricity. That's why I'm using it. If we look at our electrics here, as you can see, that's the only thing that requires electricity. If they're flip switch, it does not require electricity. We're good to go. All right, and so we need a panel. Uh, blank, rather. Grab a blank. Microcontroller here. I meant microcontroller said panel. All right, and this has to be three. It's going to take in the composite input panel. This will be uh, release, release, and this will be breaks. Those will be outputs. All right, let's get in here, and then the release is going to be a knot. So in order for me to attach to it, I actually have to click it on. So we'll read on off a couple booleans here, and that's going to be. 
I forget which one I hooked up to which, so we need to go look here. Which one's which? So that is breaks, then release. Okay, breaks, then release. So breaks is one. So if I click this on, it's going to actuate the breaks. And then this one is going to be a knot. So I have it set as an attach. So it's going to start in the unattached position. And then when I click that on, so it won't just grab onto the rail. It will need me to actually make it grab onto the rail. So I like that a little bit better. All right, so we want to go panel, and then we're going to go to brakes. We don't need all of them, but I might as well. Brakes, 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 brakes. All these brakes. This is, I would say, why they made this too tall, is to put the two nodes in. I'm pretty sure that's why they did it. I think they need to put composite nodes on everything. That would just make it so much easier. We wouldn't have to like make th make things oversized just because we need to have nodes for them. What is that? Okay, that's a funnel. I also need a funnel dump on there. We're going to put that on the same panel. What is going on here? That's funnel there. Ding, dong, ding, dong. Ding, dong. Okay. And then I need, I'm going to add funnel on this too. So we're going to change this up just a little bit. This is going to screw me up and make me have to move it, but whatever. All right, and we're going to go funnel. All right, and we'll just do three. And again, it has to be a flip switch if I don't want the electricity on there. All right, so I have to reattach. Both of them. Awesome. <laughs> now it's that's breaks is fine. Release is the one I need to reattach. Do all both of them. All right, and then funnel here. We'll go there. That will allow us to open the funnel. I would love a pass where the devs do a bunch of manual stuff, like manual cranks, where it will actually, you know, a manual flip switch, things like that. Because it would be nice to be able to manually um, crack and have that funnel open. All right, so that is in there. That should operate now. Let's test it. So should be able to dump a little coal in the ground if I have to fix the panel first. Okay. Three, we want flip switch. Dump. Three. Okay. Now let's uh, make sure we hear coal noise. Yep. Okay, good. So that works, as you can see. And let's start working on some stuff to do this with. So let's save this. And I'll save it as backup. All right, good. So we're making some progress on this. So this will load into the back of a truck. The issue is this. It is... It's a little bit wide because ideally I need the arms to be wider and I don't really want them to be wider should be narrower than this but I can't really make it narrower without you know not having a cover block here so I think that'll be fine let's see how I want to do this here we need to do a lift test anyway so let's do this let's go ahead and this is saved let's grab that trailer I made the self loader Let's try this for a second. Okay, so see, the nice thing, too, is all of these uh, painted reflector blocks are lower. Let's leave that. Let's leave that there for now. All right, and then let's find the center point of this. And I just want to test it because... I'm going to build a custom trailer, but I'm going to test to 30, so that's great. It's right in the middle. Uh, right about there, I'd say. So let's go. Oh, symmetry. Death of me. Let's go symmetry. Let's cut you. Let's go ahead and do tracks. All right, so go like that. All right, and we're just going to test one of them. So let's just go grab the skip.
and make sure that's aligned. Let's go one forward and down to the ground. Okay, and that should be fine there. This can actually cozy in a little bit because the supports aren't going to hit it. All right, so mineral skip is right next to this. Let's get these supports down where before it slides away. And then as a nightmare, let's go out. Lock these up and then down. All right, they're locked now. Let's go ahead and lock them to the ground. Beautiful. Let's go across. And so this is the lift test to make sure it's going to be liftable. It should be. I've tested with around this weight before, and it was fine. So... And so essentially what I'll do is I'll build a, I might build a proper crane trailer that has a long crane arm. That's actually what I'm going to do. I guarantee you that's what I'm going to do. And I'll tell you why. The thought of me, like I want to do gold, but gold, like I said, is insanity the way they set it up. But if I build a truck and the truck has a large crane on it and the crane sticks way off, let's say it's a backload crane. And that would actually be good because as the crane pushes down, as it has a lot of mass, it has to lift all the trailer and it has to lift the tractor up. And so that would work. And so that crane would then, it would come over, pick up a, uh, pick up one of the skips, then it would rotate and put it over the dump area. That actually might make this viable, that silliness that they did with the, uh, with the gold. Will you grab it? There we go. That's four meters. Uh, hopefully it's going to work. They're pretty short, so hopefully it'll work. But that will actually, I think that idea is going to work best. That is going to actually make it so that this whole industrial frontier, which I don't think is all that viable, make it potentially viable. I don't want to speak too soon because we'll see. It's probably going to be a nightmare, but uh, we'll see. All right, good. So that is now slung. And what I want to do is I want to hook this up to attach. So now as soon as it gets close to those, it will grab. So let's go up. So again, I'm really, I'm a thrilled with the rope update. You know, cutting the stretch down and making it so that they also have set lengths make something like this possible or not just possible but less of a pain so this actually works really well already as you can see so that's going to be able to dump that right in so we need to go down and down at the same time okay now we need to go down and left right, down and left bingo look at that so that's awesome so now that is grabbed all right it's on there but we want to turn on the brake the brake is going to make sure it doesn't slide forward and aft. So you can see with a quick crane system there like that, we can load these on. So what I'm going to do is make a trailer like this with a rear crane. Ooh, uh, I want to do this, but I can't. Is You know, I, they're going to be too heavy for a forklift. But what I was thinking is, you know, it'd be cool to have a forklift. But I think what I'm going to end up doing is making a a large crane. You see how low these are? These are very low. And the nice thing with that is the crane can come up and it can stick over the top here and it can still be low enough where it can go under bridges and everything. And then when you get to the either, let's say we want to load this onto a train. So what we do is we go up to the, say, the iron mine. We go up to the iron mine, we mine. All right. We dump, likely, let's say we use the scraper. I'm going to retrofit the scraper so that it has a couple cranes that will grab this and put it on the back. The drills will dump into the top of this, okay? Then when it's full, it will drive out of the mine, or it will drive over to where the uh, tractor trailer is waiting. Because you want your tractor trailer sitting on solid ground, you have your construction, your mining equipment go into the mine, and then the tractor trailer will go, and it will grab this up off the ground with its crane, and it will load itself. Then when it's loaded, it will go down. It's, again, we're iron mining. Let's say you want to load it onto a truck, it a train. It drives down, it loads them onto a train. Now the train car has a crane. The train car grabs these off, puts them over the dump area, dumps them, puts them back on. I think this is going to be a fun way to actually make Industrial Frontier playable. 
I would say it's not very playable at the moment. So this is actually cool. I'm getting excited about this. Okay, good. So that is good. Uh, this is working really well. So let's grab this, and I notice something that needs doing. All right, the bottom I want black. I saw a yellow bottom, and I wanted it painted black. All right, and then what we want to do is a little bit of detail in here. In here, I forget the uh, mass. So the mass here is doable. We can crane this. 243, okay. And I'm trying to think where I want to put it here. Let's put it right in the center here. And so what I'm trying to do now is more of this where what I'm going to end up doing is painting on 243. And this makes it just really super duper easy for me to tell the capacity without having to go look at it. And so we'll do, let's go, oh, come on, man. So I think that's center there. It's ugly too. Try to get this looking reasonable here in a second here. Do that for now, I'll fix it later. There we go, two. Wow, man. Stop being annoying. All right, and 243. All right, so that's the 243, and that now tells me just how much this holds. So that way I don't have to try to remember if I have a bunch of different things like this. I just look at it and it says 243. Not only is it a little bit of detail that adds some interest to it, but it tells me what it does. So let's go ahead and save that as mineral skip. All right, so I think this is good. Let's go ahead and let's see where we're at. So I think we're on time here. So I think what I'm going to do is probably finish this up maybe in a live stream. And I will see you guys later. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'm starting to get a little excited for Industrial Frontier. I was so excited when Industrial Frontier came out. It was the type of gameplay I wanted. Industrial stuff. Mining sounded awesome. And I think they really screwed it up. And I'm generally not hypercritical of devs. I don't like to be critical if I don't have some sort of solution. I have some solutions. I'm going to put together that video. And I'm going to try not to keep grouching about it until I actually come out with a video where it says, Hey, man, this is... This is how you can easily fix this and make it reasonable. And I, you know, do I think they're going to listen to me? No, but I hope they do. I hope they listen. And, you know, I'm not the only one saying this. A bunch of people came out with mods that did this, but we shouldn't have to rely on mods to do this. It should do it innately. They're not, they're not logistics professionals. And so I don't expect them to know these things. And so that's fine. But I think what, it would behoove them to now try to come in and make it better. And I think they can with really legitimately not a ton of work. I think they can pretty easily fix this uh, Industrial Frontier stuff. And so I hope they do. But in the meantime, instead of complaining about it, we're going to make some vehicles, which is a big part of the game, to try to cope with this. So I hope you guys enjoyed that, and I'll see you in the next one.